expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Minnesota arise? Madam Chairwoman, I move to strike the last word. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I rise today in support of the amendment, and I thank the gentleman from New York, Mr. Weiner, for working across uh, party lines to include us in this continuing resolution. After years of massive deficit spending and with a ballooning national debt, we must look for ways to rein in Washington's out-of-control spending and begin the process of getting our fiscal house back in order. That begins by cutting unnecessary and repetitive programs like the U.S. Institute for Peace. Make no mistake, I believe that the Institute's goals are important and they are honorable. Who among us does not wish for peace, both for ourselves and for future generations of Americans? But given our current fiscal constraints, I cannot justify in spending $42 million to pay for an organization's whose role could be fulfilled by existing departments, agencies, or nonprofit organizations, many of which do not depend on federal government funding. This program has essentially been an autopilot with no real congressional oversight since it was created 25 years ago. Over that time, the taxpayers have spent over $700 million to fund the redundant organization. Enough is enough. The people of Northeast Minnesota sent me, like many of my freshman colleagues, to Washington because they are tired of unaccountable government wasting their hard-earned dollars and borrowing it against their children's futures. I am proud to note that this amendment was supported by the Citizens Against Government Waste, a nonpartisan group whose mission is to eliminate waste, mismanagement, and inefficiency in the federal government. They know an unnecessary program when they see it. For example, in the building for the Institute for Peace, and this is from their website, there'll be a contemplation area that will provide a quiet meditative setting where visitors can reflect on their journey through a global peace, peace building center. Enveloped in a spare yet evocative space combining a soothing water element with a generous gathering area, visitors will be encouraged to take time to consider the meaning of their recent experience. Preliminary thoughts for the water feature suggest a piece of cantilevered honed slate across which flows a thin sheet of water that spills off into a table into a pool below. Including is areas of the immersion theater and past the peace building, a cumulative game will illustrate the winding path to peace filled with challenges and obstacles along the way. Visitors will determine the best route to take to reach a peaceful solution to a conflict. Signposts along the way will flag obstacles to peace, opportunities for moving the peace process forward, and dangers of backsliding or losing ground. In response to uh, President Reagan signing this into existence, what actually occurred is former Representative Dante Fassel had a provision inserted at the last minute to Title 17 of the Defense Authorization Act, which then President Reagan signed. General Petraeus, I also agree, signed in uh, 2007 uh, commending this organization, but that was several years ago, and since then we have had no oversight. In closing, this is a real, tangible cut we can make today. Eliminating this funding and returning the money to the taxpayers is just one way we can show we are serious about getting down to business and righting our fiscal ship. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment. With that, I withdraw my motion, and I yield back the remainder of my time, ma'am. The gentleman yields.